Hey, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video, we're going to talk about why you shouldn't go see an estate attorney at this time. So here we are, September 11th, 2020, 19 years after the towers fell. Uh, and in addition to that, with our COVID stuff, it's, it's just crazy. We all know it. It's no surprise. And people often ask me about business, Paul. Uh, you know, how's, you know, I'm an estate planning attorney or Paul, you're an estate planning attorney, how's business? And after I get past my usual joke answer, yeah, people are dying to come see me, then, you know, then we start having conversations about business and, and some people who talk to me about that or ask me about that, they, they wonder or they feel that, you know, COVID must be scaring some people that, you know, but that they have a fear that they might die because of COVID. So they're motivated to get their legal affairs in order. There's some truth to that. Some people ask me whether uh, COVID and this kind of um, lockdown, whether it's voluntarily, voluntary or involuntary, whether that's keeping people from you know, initiating, working with an estate planning attorney to get their legal affairs in order, and there's some of that going on. And then what's still happening a lot is the estate administration, what happens when somebody dies, and families often have to get me involved to get assets and accounts and various things transferred to the appropriate people. That hasn't slowed down just because that has to you know, keep happening. And then other people are crying, crying Paul, you know, how, how, is your, how is business being done? Are you doing it face-to-face? You know, -face? Are you doing it over the telephone? Paul, are you using Zoom calls? Or are you using WebEx? What's going on, Paul? And now six months into the pandemic, in fact, today in my state of Louisiana, we moved from phase two of the government's restrictions to the less restrictive phase three, but there's still, and will continue to be, the requirement of the old mask mandate. So here's why perhaps you shouldn't go see an estate attorney at this time. Now, and, and the reasons are most serious, in-depth, uh, oftentimes some you know, emotional discussions about um, estate planning, you know, involve how you're leaving things to children, who you're designating to, to handle things for you in the future, um, why you're leaving certain things away for certain children and grandchildren. That in-depth discussion uh, often, you know, it, it may take, let's, let's say it takes an hour, sometimes more, sometimes less. And those serious discussions are typically, and it's just the nature of the beast, are typically had uh, by people who are in their 60s and 70s, some of whom have some high-risk medical conditions. So when they do come into the office, not only, you know, you can picture the, the long rectangular conference room table that we have to sit at because instead of eight chairs, now there's maybe four to six chairs because everybody needs to sit six feet apart and everybody wears a mask. You know, it's, it's one thing to go to our grocery store with a mask on, you don't, and, and you're, you're doing your shopping, you're putting things in the cart, and maybe you're having a little bit uh, of dialogue like, hey, what aisle is the peanut butter on? But those conversations are minimized, so it's not a real inconvenience to go to the grocery store with a mask on. But it's a whole nother thing to sit across the room from people and, and need to have an, uh, a serious in-depth discussion, maybe one of the most serious discussions they've ever had in their lifetime, and have it where you're far apart and with masks on. I'll give you an example. Last week, I sat down with a couple and their financial advisor. Their financial advisor had encouraged them to come visit with me. They had a number of estate issues about how they wanted to leave things to their children, to their grandchildren. And, uh, you know, it was one of those, you know, emotional discussions. And, um, and so they, of course, had their mask on. They wanted to come in face to face. It was kind of a requirement for them. And they, they were, they had a bit of an accent where even if they had not had a mask, it would have been a little bit difficult to understand what they were saying. So, so when I would ask questions, you know, I got a couple of minutes into it and we all had our masks on and, you know, I, maybe I'd ask a question, well, you know, you just kind of poured out to me, you know, what you want to do and why you're treating certain children a little bit uh, different ways. You know, if, if you could tell me a little bit more about why you want to do that, that may, uh, you know, help me help you get everything set up just right. So, you know, that's when they start kind of pouring their heart out. And, you know, when, when they started talking, what I heard was, was something like, and I'm going to 
put my, I call it my Hanes, because it's made by Hanes, my Hanes underwear mask on. But what I heard when I asked that question that you know elicited a fairly lengthy emotional response was what I heard was, so that's that's what I hear. So it was just a a constant dialogue of, can you say that again? Or you know, and then they'd say it, and I'd pick up a little piece, but not all of it. And you know, can, can you can you say that one more time? And you know, obviously their their voice was muzzled. Uh, there's no lip reading whatsoever. It was it was frustrating. Frustrating as all get out for me. I can't imagine how it was for them. Although. I gotta admit, you know, I've learned over the years that dealing with people in their 60s and 70s, some of whom are a little hard of hearing, you know, I feel like I've learned to really project and speak fairly clearly. So I think they could hear me okay. They didn't ask me to repeat myself. I don't know if they asked me to repeat myself ever during the course of the meeting, even though I had my Hanes underwear mask on. But quite frankly, at the end of that hour, hour and a half, I was, I was exhausted. And so I'm going to encourage you to explore other options. I'm not saying put off the estate planning. I'm, ex I'm, I'm asking you to explore perhaps more effective other options. One of the most popular other options is this thing. Uh, it's, it's kind of a new invention. You may never have never seen one before but it's called the cell phone. And so they even have a company called Apple that makes what's called an iPhone. It looks like this. It's a big rectangle and you can do a bunch of stuff with it. So there's a couple of magical features on your iPhone that you can use to really simplify the estate planning process. One on a telephone call is called add a call. Some people want their, their child to be in on the conversation when they're talking to the estate attorney. And so there's the add a call button. So we're talking, you're like, and then you say, you know what, I'd like to add my son to the call. He lives in Ohio. And I'm like, great, go ahead and add him. They hit the add a call button. They find his contact, they dial him up. When he answers, you hit the same button, but it's called a merge button. And voila, we're all three now talking on the phone at a pre-scheduled time and there's no muzzling and then there's another pretty magical feature with the iphone it's called speakerphone so when husband and wife are together in the same room you know in the old days you used to have to say honey would you go back in the bedroom and pick up the phone and that then we can both talk to mr rabelais at the same time no more the magical speakerphone, and where again my voice projects, they 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 hear everything clearly. Uh, I hear everything they're saying clearly, and it's a it's a really easy way to communicate. So feel free to explore, you know, engaging that estate attorney by using the telephone. Now there's there's other features as well. Uh, there's, you know, at the start of the pandemic, everybody was talking about Zoom call, Zoom call, Zoom call. And I got kind of caught up in it as well. And so I have uh, two employees. We would have, um, you know, group um, kind of uh, conference discussions. And we were like, let's try out this Zoom thing. And we tried it out a number of times. We had a daily conference. The technology got a little difficult. Plus now I'm dealing with people in their 70s who were trying to have to figure out Zoom calls. We just haven't done a lot of Zoom calls. And then there's WebEx. I've done a little bit of WebEx, particularly when a financial advisor might be involved and their company requires it. And then I've done once a FaceTime call, again, at the suggestion of a particular client who used FaceTime a lot. And he had his phone on a nice little stand and uh, I had to hold my phone while we FaceTime, but we did that and that was okay. But I would say 95% of our client conversations in the last six months have been using this magical, magical thing called the, the iPhone. And we've been able to serve really hundreds of people during the pandemic using the telephone and email. Now, there is no, in estate planning, there is no, really, there is no getting around having to do some face-to-face, -face, but it can really be minimized. People need to come into our office 
or get in front of a notary and witnesses somewhere to get their formal estate planning documents executed. But the way we made that so easy with minimal, you know, face-to-face -face, um, masked conversation is with the telephone and with email, by the time they come in, everything has already been discussed, agreed upon, prepared or drafted, um, reviewed by both the attorney and the clients, and then approved by both the attorney and the clients prior to them having to come in to sign. So when they come in, you know, they, they know they're coming in. It's, it's social distancing time. They've got their mask on. We've got our mask on. They're coming in. Documents are on the table. They come in. It's all been pre-approved. There's really no more questions to ask. Everything's been resolved. They're happy. We, every, everything's perfect. They come in. They sign. They leave. It's a maybe five to ten minute meeting. And it's a, it's a way to get everything done without the masked garbled dialogue that goes with having to sit across the room from someone with all parties being masked up and trying to understand what that garbled conversation means. So, you know, I did see on the news earlier, Dr. Fauci, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. Nobody's been right on all their things, predictions in the last six months, but Dr. Fauci said we won't be back to normal until maybe the end of 2021 at the earliest. And I'll let you in on another little secret as to why you should um, kind of be encouraged to engage the estate attorney without, um, there, without requiring that there be face-to-face -face meetings on the front end. At least I can speak for this estate planning attorney. I like being home with my wife in the same room and I'm wearing a pair of golf shorts and a t-shirt all day and I'm very, very comfortable conducting business over the phone by email um, and all the phone calls are scheduled and so they start promptly. You know, when travel and people have to travel to appointments, sometimes people get there 30 minutes early, 15 minutes late. So in this environment, uh, it's a very comfortable relationship uh, uh, situation for the attorney who can work from home, no travel time, no having to play dress up. Now, as the pandemic goes away, I'm sure I'll be doing more in office meetings. But for now, I'm suggesting that you should feel free to actively explore engaging your estate attorney without the masked, um, garbled, muzzled, meeting that where everybody's you know uh, straining to talk and to understand and to listen to uh, and hear what others is are saying so for example one way we made things easier is on my website and on all of my youtube posts i give people a link where they can go directly to my calendar and schedule an initial phone conversation with me so um, this has happened so many times over and over again. People find me on the internet, they click the link, they see my calendar, they put in their information because they want to have a scheduled call at let's say two o'clock on Tuesday because that's an available time that I made. Um, we both get, you know, we all get multiple email confirmations that that call is going to happen. And then precisely at two o'clock on Tuesday, I give that person a call. They're prepared. They often have the other people that they want on the conversation in the room with them or available for a conference call. So that's been real, real easy and been real successful at that. So there you have it. Um, it's just the, the good old days. Everything had to be done face to face. COVID has forced things and business to be done without face to face meetings. I want to encourage you to um, be proactive and don't procrastinate because you can't have a face to face meeting. You can get more done other ways. Also make sure you obliterate the like button, turn it from gray to blue. That tells YouTube, hey, show more people Paul's videos. If you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you won't miss anything. We'll see you next time.